Yes? Okay. Oh, it works. So, uh, probably uh, first an introduction. I'm Philip. I'm the president of the, of, the, of the Open Source Firmware Foundation. I'm from Germany and I'm since eight years into firmware development, a lot of open source firmware development. I also started my own department uh, eight years ago related to that. And we're working mostly on with like different types of firmware like Piano Core, EDK2, uh, core boot firmware, also embedded controllers, OpenBMC, and different other varieties of open source firmware components. Um, today I'm going to give you in a keynote a short introduction about the Open Source Firmware Foundation, what we are, uh, what we are trying to do, and how we want to achieve our goals. Um, first of all, breaking boundaries is the slogan for the Open Source Firmware Foundation. And uh, the reason why we have that is that we want to break boundaries of the hardware industry yeah, by leveraging highly innovative open source firmware. What does it mean? So I don't know how deep you are you in this like, hardware development. The problem is that a lot of hardware vendors, they don't understand software at all. And so the problem is they try to tend to, to just buy in this software, ship it on the device, but the quality differs a lot on these components. And most of the time, um, those hardware vendors, they, had, they have not really skilled employees, which are also going to conferences, for example, or allowed to go to conferences to basically get more input about new technology and technologies and so on. And so it's really hard for them to, to understand innovation in this ecosystem. And it's also really, let's say, closed source because there are a lot of NDAs in place, which stops, uh, stop people from doing um, like open development. And so what we try to do here is basically to break this. Uh, boundaries um, they have set up over the last 30 years. Um, yeah, first of all, we ask it our community. So we have a huge community. I think around like 1,200 people joined our communication channel on Slack, um, and we ask it them once what what's important for them for open source, uh, open source firmware in general, right? W what's important? So first of all, the community so they can work together and build innovation. But also, like security is a big, important um, uh, component because they want to use open source to have transparency and control of their own hardware components. And so this is uh, this also comes with cost reduction because it's really hard to debug uh, closed source firmware on on a device. So if you're, for example, Facebook, we have worked with them or Meta nowadays. Uh, they have a lot of, let's say, in the data center, a lot of different types of hardware with a lot of proprietary software. It's completely closed source, and if you want to debug that, it's impossible because you don't know what kind of code is running there, and the, the code itself doesn't give you any debug capability. So if you're having bugs there and you need to maintain those infrastructures, it gets really cost expensive, especially if you are having like tens of millions of servers running, and so this is a big issue for especially hyperscalers. Yeah. Um, so. But let's talk about our <laughs> team. Um, that's me. Um, I'm basically the president, and there's also Martin, the secretary. We are in a US mutual benefit corporation. So it means we are nonprofit, and um, we set it up in the US because it's the most common thing. A lot of like customers are there for our foundation in terms of customers. And so uh, that's how it goes. We have also a board of directors. This is Chris here, Christian Walter, and we also have Kai. Uh, which are part of the board of directors, and there's also Werner C. Uh, he's part of Siemens, yeah, and um, they are working with us together on this foundation. The foundation is quite new. We set up recently, like the beginning of the year. We're working longer on it, but it took a while because of COVID <laughs> to set it up remotely from Germany in the US. Um, yeah, so open source firmware is like about uh, plays a huge role in cost reduction, transparency, flexibility, and IT security as well as testability. And it always tries to decrease cost, um, in, uh, introduce um, transparency also for debugging, not only for security reasons. And it's often more the most flexible solution can, can, uh, you can get on the market. So customers normally wants to do customization on their platforms, and it's really hard to do so if it's closed source ecosystem. And so. Also, the growth of the firmware is like really huge nowadays. We have like 64 megabytes for BIOS firmware already, so 32 to 64 megabytes. And it means uh, only for the BIOS, you, when you press the power button of your laptop, the software is already that huge. It means um, it will increase in the next 10, 20 years probably to 250 megabytes. And this is a lot of code and a lot of complexity. 
And so for that, we need definitely some kind of uh, open and transparent solution. Yeah, we want, what, what do we want to do as foundation? We want to drive specifications in the open source firmware ecosystem. We want to isolate the adoption of open source firmware in the hardware industry, which is quite hard, but we uh, already have had some success. We use the communication between different parties in the ecosystem, especially the open source community and those companies, and we try to promote um, the open source firmware through case studies and marketing. We are also an umbrella for all the open source firmware projects out there. Uh, you can find on the internet. And for as well, we want to train and be a knowledge base for a lot of people which are not really well uh, yeah, informed about firmware development because there's a huge, let's say, we are missing a lot of, um, um, highly, let's say, co uh, competent people which, are need, uh, which, are, uh, which are need to be there for the companies because a lot of people are getting old already. It's really hard to find new firmware developers out there. Yeah. Um, so the last slide, <laughs> then I'm done. I hope, I hope I'm still in time. So this is the open, open source firmware ecosystem. We call it like we have like OEMs, so people, the people and the ODMs which build the hardware mostly or sell it to the customer depending on what kind of role they play. We have the consumers, this is like, for example, companies just buying hardware and want to maintain the hardware they buy. And then we have the SOC vendors, this is like the guys who are building the processors, the chips, basically. And then we have the open source community, which is also working on specific parts of the ecosystem. And then we have a special term, it's called OSF IBV. These guys are basically like companies offering services through the open source firmware for uh, for these consumers, for example, or directly to the OEM and ODM to integrate software into the community. Because this is also a hard thing to do. A lot of companies struggle to work together with the um, open source communities, regardless if it's open source firmware or any other open source project. So it's not always easy. Yeah. And that's the entire ecosystem. So if you want to get more, know, more, uh, more about it, yeah, just contact us on our homepage or via email, or you can just talk to us. I'm here for the next two days and yeah, I hope you enjoy the talks and the next sessions.